Today we're going to highlight the breed Easter Eggers, which there was one and here's another one. And we're going to talk about why so many people are panic buying chicks right now. We'll start with the panic buying. So ever since COVID a couple years ago, people really started to get into backyard chickens. One, I think it was because a lot of people weren't able to work, so they were at home and they were bored and they wanted to try something new. And also people wanted to be able to raise their own food because of all the supply chain issues. And now people are starting to panic again, just like they did the 2020 COVID year, and they're panic buying chicks. And on one hand, I wanna say, depending on your situation, it could either be a terrible idea and there's gonna be a lot of people that are in over their heads and they're gonna be trying to rehome their chickens once they grow up and they see all the work and all the mess that they make. Because you should never panic buy a living creature. Because that living creature is going to be fully dependent on you. You're going to have to keep it clean. You're going to have to house it, feed it, take care of it. There's going to be vet bills, just like any other animal. And in my opinion, I think that keeping chickens is pretty easy. I enjoy it. It's fun for me. But that's because I'm into animals. So if you're thinking about starting your own flock, just do a lot of research first. There's no need to rush out and get them because it's not the end of the world if your local store sells out of chicks. There's always other places to get them and other dates and times when you can find them. And now on the other hand, if you've done your research and you have the time and space and money to start your own flock, I think it is a really good idea. Because one, I think it's very important to know how to raise your own food just in case you never know what's going to happen and it's not good to be so dependent on all of these stores and on the government. It's a great educational experience, especially if you have kids. It's great because it'll get you physically active and outside in the fresh air. It's a really fun hobby and these guys are extremely entertaining. It's a lot of fun, especially when you have all the different breeds like I do and you get to see how different they all are. And fresh eggs definitely taste a lot better than store-bought eggs. And I've heard that backyard chickens' eggs tend to be healthier and be lower in cholesterol as well. And it makes sense because if your hens are happy and healthy and you're feeding them fresh fruits and vegetables along with their layer feed and oats and sunflower seeds like I do, it only makes sense that the eggs would probably be more nutritionally sound. So if you have the time and space to do it, I think you should definitely go for it. If you're someone that doesn't have the time and space for chickens, then just consider making friends with a farmer or someone local who does raise different animals. Reach out and support them. Even if they're a little bit more expensive than what you're getting from the grocery store, just keep in mind that you're spending that money on quality items. And since it's something that you're gonna be eating, you should definitely spend the extra money on something quality. And keeping the money within your community is great for the local economy, so it's a win for everyone. One thing that I always find really funny is that people say that they'll get free eggs if they have chickens. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Because you have to fence them in. I mean, you can free range them, but that's a good way to lose a lot of your flock and waste money because then you'll have to replace them. Lumber is very expensive right now, so that means that coops are more expensive. And feed is at an all-time high, which is part of the reason why egg prices have really gone up. So that's just a couple things to keep in mind if you're getting chickens just for the egg part of it. And in the meantime, if you don't have chickens yet, but you still wanna get them because they're so expensive at the store, please consider buying from someone local while you do your research. And that's a really nice way to go and maybe see their flock and see their chickens and see if it is something that you wanna try taking on yourself. And it's very important to support your local community. And just remember that with these feed prices, everyone is struggling right now. So that's part of why the egg prices have gone up so high. The other reason is they're saying that the bird flu wiped out a lot of flocks last year. So that was really devastating on poultry farmers. But we're not gonna go too much into that. We're gonna focus on the Easter eggers, which here is another one. This is Bluebell, she lays a green egg. So I manage this little farm store right in town and we're gonna get some baby chicks in this Thursday. It's gonna be our first batch of the season and Easter eggers and lavender orpingtons, which is this gray one right here are some of the first ones that we're gonna be getting in. And in a way I'm excited about it because I love baby chicks, but in another way I'm dreading it because people have been going crazy with the panic buying. There's a feed store not too far away from where I work. Apparently they sold out of their chicks in like less than an hour and some customers even got into a really bad fight over it because they were mad that the person in front of them got the last couple ones. And then one of the sister locations to the store that I manage got in their chicks a week early and they sold out. They got hundreds of chicks in. They were gone within like 45 minutes. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. I will definitely include some shots of the chicks because at work I run their Facebook page. So I'll be taking pictures and filming the chicks for that anyway. I'll throw some of that footage in. But I probably won't be able to get too much because obviously I'll be working and I expect them to sell out very quickly. So even after hours, they might not be around for me to film more of them. 
but I'll do what I can. So to go into detail about the Easter egg, here is one of them, that's Rosemary. That is Snapdragon. And here's Snapdragon's egg, just like Bluebell, she lays a really pretty green egg. And then you can't really tell too well on camera, but Rosemary lays more of like a pinkish cream one. And Easter Eggers are also known to lay blue. I used to have an Easter Egger named Honeydew, and she laid a really, really pretty blue egg. It was almost like robin egg blue. It was huge. She laid an egg almost every single day, but unfortunately she passed away a couple months ago. But at the end of the video, I'll include some footage of her and how pretty her egg was. So Easter Eggers are basically a mixed breed. It's not a purebred chicken. It's a cross between an Americana, which is what a lot of people mistake these for, but a true Americana will always lay blue eggs. They're very rare, they're pretty expensive, and they're pretty hard to find. So that's why it's become a lot more popular for the hatcheries and the stores just to sell the mixed breeds of the half Americanas. So they're Easter Eggers. And then I'll show it on the screen. There's a way that a lot of stores and hatcheries will trick their customers and they'll spell Americana differently than the actual Americana that lays the blue eggs. So if you see it spelled with the I in there like this, then that means that it's actually an Easter egg, or the true spelling of Americana looks like this. I've heard that a breed called an Arucana is sometimes also mixed to make an Easter egg, -er, but that breed is incredibly rare, and in most cases an Americana is used instead because they're more common. And then if you look on her, I don't know how well the video is picking it up, but she has green earlobes and she lays a green egg, so that's pretty cool. My Americana that laid the blue egg had blue earlobes. So Easter Eggers pretty much always have these cute little beards and the muffy heads. They tend to have teeny tiny combs, just like Bluebell sporting right there. And they come in lots of different color varieties, which is something that makes them really fun. Because when you get them, you never really know what you're going to turn out with. Because since they're a mix, they come in so many different colors. So I've found that Easter Eggers tend to be pretty outgoing and friendly. I have never had a mean one. My one that laid the blue egg that has passed away, she was very, very skittish at first. She was not that friendly. But then it was weird because when she started laying eggs and like matured a little bit, she really mellowed out and became a really sweet chicken. Easter Eggers will only lay one colored egg their entire life. You have the option with them to get either the pink like we talked about, the blue, or the green but you'll never have a bird that can rotate between the three colors. Each one's gonna stick with one color. And besides just having all the fun to see what color the chicks are gonna grow up to be as they mature, it's also a lot of fun to wait and see what color egg they're gonna lay. Easter eggers are very hardy, they're friendly, they're social. They're not very loud, at least not in my experience. And they're very nosy. Snapdragon here is always very interested in what's going on and she's always one of the first to greet me. When I first got these guys, the Easter eggers that I have now, besides Bluebell, she came from my second batch of hens, or chicks, I got them as chicks, but you know what I mean. But Snapdragon was one of my originals, and I got her in March, and the power went out, we had some really crazy weather, and she started peeping really loud and alerted me, it woke me up, so I went and got her and all the other chicks, and I carried them down and kept them in front of the fireplace until the power came back on. So she saved the day. We're supposed to have some crazy weather at the end of this week too. And that's right around the time when the chicks are supposed to arrive. They're gonna arrive the day before we're supposed to get a snowstorm, which is kind of hard to believe because it's so mild today. But we'll fast forward to that. I'll show you how it goes with the chicks and hopefully the weather won't be too bad.
said you want a dark one. Yeah. What do you like? Dark, dark ones or light ones better? I like a mix. A mix. You want like an all black one or just like a dark brown? I think a, the mix, like you said. Is he pretty good? Yeah, I got a little chipmunk one like this, and she grew up to lay green eggs. Alright, so there's one. How, how do we know if they're gonna have blue eggs? Yeah, no you guarantee. really can't tell. <laughs> it's just luck of the draw. There's when no they way. start laying, you know. <laughs> My one that laid the blue eggs look like this when she was a chick. This is cute. These I get that one? Yeah. She's eating. She looks like this one. This or one. this one. She looks like she's raring to go. Hi, sweet baby. Hey, yo. You're so precious. Look at this. This one has like a little polka dot on its head. That's really cute. It's attacking. <laughs> hey, it's attacking that one. What the heck? Stop. Jeez. Chickens can be savage sometimes. Like, if they weren't gonna all be sold in like an hour with this many, I'd probably recommend putting them in something bigger. But they'll be gone very shortly. Every day when I get home from work, they run over to greet me as soon as they hear the door. Well, that was crazy, just like we thought it would be, but it went way more smooth than I thought it would go. Obviously, I couldn't film because I was at work, so I'm not going to do that. Luckily, I was able to include some little bits and pieces from before we were selling chicks and before the customers came in of us just unboxing them, checking them over, taking some of them out to get pictures and videos for our Facebook page for the store. That way we could advertise them for when they were ready to be sold. But it was intense. We had a line out the door all the way through the parking lot. There was no parking spots left. It was crazy. I've never seen anything like it. But all of our customers were very kind and civil, so it went very smooth. Unfortunately, not everyone was able to get chicks today because we sold out in 15 minutes. I'm not even kidding. But we will be getting more shipments of chicks as spring goes on. So we'll have more chances for people to come by and get some. I heard that at some feed stores near us, there were people getting into fights, bad arguments, that there were people camped out in parking lots at four in the morning, hours before the stores even opened. So we're really lucky with all of our customers today that it went so well. We're really grateful for that. And like we talked about earlier in the video, if you're not truly ready for chickens, do not panic buy them, please. That's not good for anybody. But if you are ready for them and your local feed store is sold out before you could get there, there are other options. There's tons of hatcheries that you can order from online and they can ship them directly to you so you can make sure that you get exactly what you want. Or look around, get on some local Facebook groups and see if there's anyone locally who's breeding and selling baby chicks or even hatching eggs. It's very important to support local people. But we're going to wrap it up for today. And for anyone who was wondering, those little pale gray chicks in the video today were lavender Orpingtons that we got in along with the Easter Eggers. Here's one of the Easter Eggers, Rosemary. But lavender Orpingtons grow up to look like... We got cornflower. Her right there. That's Marigold. I'll touch on those real quick just because they were in the video. It's an extremely sweet breed, very calm, very quiet. They get along with everyone. They sometimes go broody and make really good mothers. Now, Marigold's never gone broody, but I've heard really, really good things about the ones that have if you're into raising chicks, but you don't want them in your house. You could always let a broody hen take over the care for you, but just supervise them if you do that to make sure that they're actually gonna take to each other. I've done it with my Silky before with lots of success, but my Lavender Orpin hen lays about four eggs a week. It's pretty decent size and they're like a creamish color, really, really pale brown. 
I would not mix them with more aggressive breeds like Rhode Island Reds, for example, because they will get picked on because they're so sweet and calm. But Lavender Orpingtons are definitely, well, Orpingtons in general, they come in different colors. Like that one right there, that's a red Orpington, the one in the middle. But it's such a great breed, really good for beginners, really, really good for kids. You've probably noticed in a lot of my videos that Marigold, my Lavender Orpington, is always one of the first to greet me. So it's just such a great breed, I can't recommend them enough. At the end here, I'll include some videos of her just being friendly and cute, and you can see if it's something that you might like to add to your flock. Orpingtons also come in buff, which is the most common color. That color looks similar to the silky here. They also come in black, red, like we touched on, there's my red one, and several other colors, but the buff and the lavender and the red are the most common, at least in my area. I've also been told that the bird flu is apparently on the rise again near us. We live in Maryland, and I heard that in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, it's been popping up again. So when I came home, I took off my work clothes, washed up, put on a whole new outfit, and then came out here once everything was disinfected because I don't want to risk anything happening to my birds. And I don't even wear the, my work shoes in this backyard, period, just in case. But luckily, all the chicks we got in today all were very healthy, very lively. We did set up a little hospital bin in the back that we nicknamed the Chick You. And we put some that we thought looked a little bit weaker in there, but they bounced right back and we were able to sell them after a couple hours and everyone did great. No issues, so we got really lucky with this batch and we'll be looking forward to the next batch.